Hello everybody and welcome to my rocks lecture. This is all just review stuff that you've learned before, but I wanted to go ahead and um, show you guys that again so you can remember it in our time at home. So what is a rock? If you remember in class, we talked about how rocks are like words and minerals are like letters. So a rock is composed of one or more minerals and we have the three classifications for them. We have igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. And they can change from one type to another through the rock cycle. So here's a picture of the rock cycle. Now this takes a long time. It's not a matter of days. You have sediments that go through compaction and cementation to become sedimentary rock. It can then go through heat and pressure to become a metamorphic rock. A metamorphic rock can become another type of metamorphic rock through additional heat and pressure. So there should be an arrow like this back around on itself. Um, but if it doesn't become another type of metamorphic rock, it could melt if there's enough heat to then become magma or lava and then cools, crystallizes, and solidifies into an igneous rock. Okay, so there's many paths that rocks can take on the rock cycle, some of which are not necessarily shown on that diagram. So an igneous rock, by definition, is formed from the cooling and crystallization of magma or lava. It can happen below the surface, or it can happen on the surface of Earth. Sedimentary rock is formed from the compaction and um, cementing of sediments into a new rock. Those sediments can be very small to the point that you can't see them, or it could be like the one on your screen now where you can see the round pebbles kind of cemented together. And then last but not least, we have metamorphic rocks that are formed from heat and pressure on an existing rock uh, to morph or change it into a new rock. And as you can see up there, this is a very nice rock, one of my favorites. So make sure that you understand these vocabulary terms. Magma is melted rock, but it's below the surface. Lava is magma that has erupted onto the surface, so we change the name of it. Weathering is the breakdown of rock into smaller pieces, and sediment is those smaller pieces. All right, so igneous rocks, remember igneous rocks are formed from the cooling and crystallization of magma or lava. So the picture that you see there, that's lava cooling and crystallizing, so you can see the darker colors there. Uh, this is a picture of basalt, which is a dark colored rock, as you can see around it. And it's very common and found on the ocean floor. It could cool inside earth, that magma or lava, and in that case, we call it an intrusive igneous rock. It's going to cool slowly because it has the rock around it, kind of insulating it, and it allows the crystals to grow larger. Now, when I say a large crystal, it's you know a few, few millimeters. Basically, you can see it without any special tools. You can just see it if you look at the sample. That would be an intrusive igneous rock with large crystals. An igneous rock can also be extrusive, meaning it cooled uh, outside the volcano. It exited the volcano, and it's going to cool much faster because it's going to have contact with the air. So those crystals might not form at all, or they might be very tiny. It might have a glassy texture or even a vesicular texture where it has the holes in it because of the gas bubbles popping. So those are going to cool much faster and have a different texture than the intrusive igneous rocks. So we can classify those igneous rocks based on their texture and their composition or what they're made out of. So minerals can be light or dark. And your texture can be uh, coarse, fine, glassy, vesicular. Those are all words that we use to describe texture. So if you look up there now, we have coarse grained and you can see the actual crystals there. That would be a large crystal due to the slow cooling. Or the one that's kind of the solid gray mass right above me 
is, at least I think you can see me on there, um, that would be a fine texture. It kind of has a matte finish in real life and you really can't see any of the crystals. So an example of a coarse grained rock, this is granite. Oops. This is rhyolite. Rhyolite has the fine grain texture to it. Um, you really can't make out a whole lot of crystals in there. If you saw it in real life, it's very matte finish, not shiny. Some other types of texture that I mentioned is glassy. So obsidian, as you guys see there, um, which is this one right here, uh, cools very rapidly. So no crystals can form. And porphyritic is what you see here. Porphyritic means that it has the two stages of cooling. So you have the slow cooling and the fast cooling. So you can see large crystals kind of mixed in with the fine grains there. So felsic is looking at the mineral composition of that igneous rock. Felsic means that it is generally light in color and contains a lot of minerals that are silicates, so quartz comes to mind. Um, and what rocks you see up here, those would both be classified as felsic. Uh, this one right here, this is granite, and it does have some dark minerals in it, but overall it's light in color, so therefore it is felsic. Intermediate is kind of the medium, and um, you can see that we kind of have a medium gray color or like a 50-50% in dark and light. Or mafic is overall darker and your minerals are um, dark in color and there's less silicates, less silica and more iron and magnesium to give it that darker color. Ultra mafic, these are gonna be um, rare. So it's not anything that we looked at in class and not likely something that you would find um, outside. Okay, so silica is the um, light colored minerals that we've been talking about and the silicates. All right, some other features that you should be familiar with. These are all examples of plutons that you see up there now. Um, a pluton is the mass of intrusive igneous rock that uh, cools and crystallizes below ground. So it's gonna have those, the coarse grains, the large crystals. Um, so all of these are plutons and we give it a different name depending on the features of that pluton. Um, so looking at that picture there, you can see a batholith is very large. And then coming off of those batholiths, you have these veins kind of cutting up into the rock layers there. Those are dikes. And if it goes horizontal with the, uh, the rock layers that you see there, that's a sill. Or if it pushes up because it is a, a thick sill, it's a, a thick type of magma, most likely felsic because of all that silica in there, it's gonna create this dome mass called a lacolith. Okay, and on this slide, we're looking at a chart of major igneous rocks, some of which you might remember. So the way that you read this chart, first you look at the chemical composition. So basically you're looking at the color of the, the minerals in that rock. So granitic is another way to say felsic. It's really difficult to write on here. Uh, basaltic would be mafic. And acidic would be your medium, okay, or your in between. Um, so you're going to look at the coloring uh, of those minerals and decide is it granitic, is it basaltic. Remember, you're not going to find much ultra mafic, so don't even really think that it's there. If it's dark in color, put it under mafic. And then you're going to look at the texture of your rock and decide is it coarse or fine grained, is it glassy or vesicular. So you look at texture. If it's coarse grained, it could be any of these rocks here. So let's say we have a light color. So granitic or felsic igneous rock, and it's coarse grained. You can see the crystals in it without any special tools. Well, you probably have granite. Or if it's mafic and fine grained, or even vesicular, you can have a vesicular basalt, right? Because you're following the chart like this. 
something over like that to get your rock name. Um, porphyritic would be again your mixed texture. You have some large crystals kind of embedded in the fine grain background and glassy is basically like obsidian. Most people know what obsidian looks like. It just looks like a black glass with that um, conchoidal fracture. Okay, so now let's look at sedimentary rocks. So the first step of sedimentary rock formation is the weathering or the breakup of the solid rock into smaller pieces, known as sediments. Then we're gonna get erosion, so the transport or moving of those pieces. It could be um, by water, wind, ice, gravity, just like we talked about in the agents of erosion unit. And then the last step here, shown here anyway, would be deposition. So then the settlements are going to settle down um, and are dropped by whatever agent of erosion. And remember, water does an excellent job um, at sorting sediments based on size. So as that water loses energy, first it's going to drop your larger sediments, then your medium, and then your really fine or small sediments as the water is very still and doesn't have the energy to carry it. Um, the next step here is showing us compaction and cementing. So you have the deposition, you have the sediments, let's say, settled down on the bottom of um, a calm body of water. And over time, more sediments are going to go on top of those existing sediments and kind of bury them and compact them as they um, go underground. And then you have dissolved minerals kind of deposited between those grains. So it cements them together, acting like glue. So we have three main groups of sedimentary rocks. We have clastic, chemical, and organic. And remember, organic in science means something that's alive or once was alive. So here we have some examples of clastic sedimentary rocks. Um, these would be where the sediments are cemented together. Those sediments can be visible, like what you see here at the bottom. That's conglomerate, and you can see the round pebbles all cemented together. That's an excellent example of clastic sedimentary rocks. Or the one above that, kind of on the top right there, that's shale. Okay, that's pieces of uh, very fine sediments like mud and clay um, cemented together. So you really can't tell the difference between the different sediments. They're so small, but it is still an example of a clastic sedimentary rock. The other example that's listed up here is sandstone, and that's just sand grains all stuck together. Here we have our chemical sedimentary rocks. So this is going to be a rock where the minerals are dissolved in water and then those minerals either precipitate out of that solution or fall out of solution or the water evaporates away leaving behind the minerals. So we have limestone uh, is a great example of a chemical sedimentary rock and at the bottom there that is halite or um, rock salt. The last group like I mentioned earlier is organic made from things that were alive or or once was alive. So the top one that you see there, that is coquina. That's little pieces of shell, a little hard to see in that picture, but little pieces of shell all cemented together. And of course, shells come from living things. Uh, chalk is shown there at the bottom, and you'll see limestone again listed here. Limestone is made from the skeletons and shells of things that lived in water that died and they compacted down to then form limestone. So it's both um, listed as a organic and a chemical type of sedimentary rock. Okay, some features of sedimentary rocks that you should be familiar with. Um, you can see in this rock, we have like a layering effect that's called stratification. And whenever you find a rock with a fossil in it, I want you to classify it as sedimentary. Um, this rock right here, you can see fossils of shells in there. You can see graded bedding in this example here at the top. We have sediments of different sizes in the layers there. So you can see like um, large pebbles. And then on top of that, it looks like maybe sand or something like that. 
Um, and then below that picture, we have cross bedding, where the layers you can see are kind of slanted at an angle. So that's called cross bedding. Up here now, you can see we have a chart of sedimentary rocks. So we have clastic and chemical listed up here now. And at the very bottom, you'll see that we have organic. It's not separated out. Um, but organic is down here at the bottom, right? Once alive, think of like coal or um, shells compacted together. Now coal is made from plant material that's been compacted together. That's why it's considered organic. Um, so some common sedimentary rocks that you might come across. Um, if it is a clastic sedimentary rock and you can actually see round pebbles kind of cemented together like we looked at earlier, that would be a conglomerate. Now if it looks like pebbles stuck together, um, you know, these pebbles are like over two millimeters, okay, very visible, but um, those pebbles are angular, you might have breccia. If it's sand stuck together, it's sandstone. If it's mud or silt stuck together, you get siltstone. Or if it's very fine particles stuck together, you probably have shale. And honestly, we have a lot of shale around here. It's very likely that you would find shale. I'm thinking of the on the toll road where the road cuts into the hills there and you see the rock layers, the rock strata there, that's all shale. Some examples of chem chemical sedimentary rock, of course, we have uh, limestone, which is um, something that you can also find here in Loudoun County. Um, let's see, what else might you find? That's about it. I don't think that you're going to find a whole lot of these um, just in your backyard. Um, but you should also know that rock salt is a chemical sedimentary rock since it forms, it's an evaporate. It forms from salt being dissolved in the water, the water evaporating away, leaving behind the salt. So we call it rock salt at that point. Okay, metamorphic rocks. Metamorphism means to change. And that's going to happen because of a change in pressure and temperature. You can have contact metamorphism and regional metamorphism. Contact implies touching. Okay, so it's going to be nearby and it's going to affect a larger area of rock. Whereas regional is, just like the name says, over an entire region. So it's going to, be, it's going to affect a much larger area. So here's an example of contact metamorphism. We have the magma chamber below ground. And so that would be your melted rock. And um, it's gonna kind of bake, and you can see by that rich orange color there, it's gonna bake the rock that's nearby that it's touching. Um, not melting it necessarily, but, but changing it. So that's all about the change in temperature. Marble is an excellent example of a rock that is changed in that way. Marble comes from limestone. Regional metamorphism covers a much larger area, an entire region. And I want you to think about mountains being built. So at that convergent plate boundary, uh, they're colliding and causing tons of pressure and the rock is grinding um, and can actually change the rock through intense heat and pressure. So your agents of metamorphism, more metamorphism is heat, pressure, and also chemical action. Okay, so heat is the most important agent of metamorphism, and it's going to be the energy that is provided to drive those chemical reactions. Pressure is going to compact that rock and actually create a more dense rock as the end product and pressure will increase with depth as you go down underground. Okay, so this is just looking at how some of the um, different um, ways that, that pressure can change the rock. So you can see that rock strata are basically the layers of the uh, sedimentary rock. And the end result is either foliated or non-foliated metamorphic rock. Those are the two classifications. So foliated rock, you have the bands or a layering or stripes in the rock due to all that pressure. It's basically squished those minerals and caused them 
uh, to have a flat appearance and kind of layer a little bit. Non-foliated rock just simply lacks that. Um, so nice is an example of a foliated metamorphic rock and marble is an excellent example of a non-foliated metamorphic rock. Okay, so here's your chart to classify or name your metamorphic rocks. This can be a little tough too because you're going to want to look first at that texture, decide is it foliated or non-foliated. Um, if it has obvious stripes or banding, you're, you're going to be here on the chart. Okay, That would be like the example on the last slide where you saw that zebra stripe effect going on. Um, and most likely you're going to have nice at that point. Um, if you see uh, it looks like it has layers. It looks like those minerals are squished. You might be at this point in the texture chart um, and you might have slate. And this diagram also has the parent rocks for you so you can see what it used to be. And then over here, the rock name on the left, that's the metamorphic rock. That's what it becomes. So in this case, shale becomes slate. Now slate can undergo more metamorphism. So the parent here is slate and that can actually become phyllite. Phyllite can become schist. Schist can become gneiss. But also notice that granite, granite can also become gneiss. The non-foliated rocks are here at the bottom. So if you don't see any stripes, banding, or squished looking minerals, then you might have a non-foliated. Um, remember, limestone becomes marble, sandstone becomes quartzite, and your coal, which is the organic sedimentary rock, can actually, um, if it's buried deeper in earth and, and gets more pressure, it'll become denser, and then it becomes anthracite coal.